that buyer's agent, a lot of people think that it is a separate licence. And you know what? Pre-March 2020, it was. Pre-September 2003, it wasn't. So, you know, the, the world changes. And it's now, if you want to be a buyer's agent, you need to hold a full real estate licence. Class 2, working under a Class 1 or a Class 1 if you're running your own show. So, you know, to so you need that full real estate license again i you know i I'd say that and yes of course if you if you're a class one agent and you're running a buyer's agency business yes you can have a certificate of registration holders or assistant agents working under your license and they'll be working towards their class two and ultimately their class one if if that's where you want them if that's where they want to be but remembering that there's also you know as a buyer's agent you are still required under the act section 55 of the act to have an agency agreement between you as an agent and your buyer Part of that agency agreement is to get a buyer's brief as to, you know, for money, for what they're looking for. And that's all part of, of the differences in the agency agreement. So you just can't go out and be a buyer's agent and not get this correct. So, you know, you still need the agreement. You still need to get their uh, fraud prevention photo ID. So, you know, obviously on that form that Fair Trading put out, there's three sections. First section is photo ID. Second section is that secondary uh, identification. So you're looking at Medicare cards and credit cards and and um, you know rates no you know anything to, to that has their name and an address on it to identify them as a person. The third part, which shows ownership of property, obviously you're not going to do that because they're looking to purchase the property. They don't already own it. So there, be sensible about that. It's sections one and two, and not the third section on there. So, but you still need to. Um, get that fraud prevention ID checklist done because that is a requirement for anyone with whom you enter into an agency agreement. You know, you're, at, you're now acting in the best interest of the buyer because the buyer is your client. You're not acting the best, you shouldn't be acting in the best interest of the vendor or the other agent who's listed the property. Your client is the buyer. So that's what, that's who you, that's where your fiduciary or your duty of trust lies is with the buyer. Uh, there are specific rules of conduct They're in the uh, schedules at the end of the uh, property and stock agents regulation. There are specific rules of conduct that relate to just the buyer's agent. So, you know, it has been identified with the changes in the, the, the updating of the rules of conduct and some of the schedules and the updating of the regulations that have happened in the last couple of years, particularly last year. There are some specific issues that surround the practices for buyer's agents. So it's really important to know what they all are. And uh, for those of you who are real estate agents and and work on the selling side and want to, you know, act at times or or jump over to the to the to the flip side of the sales process and work for a buyer, yes, we do have a specific buyer's agency course that can can go through that. But you know some people will do that as their their licensing elective. Some people will do it as a professional development and just get those additional skills and knowledge about working as a buyer's agent within the New South Wales property industry. So there's an option for you, but certainly, you know, there's all of those issues about not taking payment from both sides of a deal and how you can do that within an agency. So there are, there are all the issues that come out of the rules of conduct about how you operate as a buyer's agent. But certainly, uh, in any type of market, it's good to have lots of strings to your bow in terms of the services you can offer to your clients. And buyer's agents are, are much more prevalent than they've ever been in the past. And if you're a selling agent, you need to be working with them. If you're a buyer's agent, you need to know how to operate within this environment and work with the listing agents. So guys, perfect opportunity there to uh, do some additional professional development and, uh, and you know, which is obviously a requirement now of the new training plans that are that has come about. So uh, always a bonus on that level.